Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are enjoying the weather, the sunshine, the heat. Yeah, uh, don't forget to hydrate yourselves. It is too hot outside. Welcome to this online workshop um, named Staying Healthy. Uh, this Staying Healthy workshop is going to focus on sexual health in the period of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, it, is, it, is, it is going to be a, a, a vibrant workshop because um, of so many issues that we are going to discuss or talk about. Um, this workshop is organized uh, by Positive East and uh, we have participation of Reverend Gide as well from House of Rainbow. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Um, Positive East is a sexual health charity. And this charity uh, is mainly based the services are in East London. That's right. Um, Positive East has a vision. And this vision is a world where people living with HIV are able to ful fulfill their potential, free from stigma and discrimination, and live a healthy life. The other part of the vision is really a wish for a, a world where the onward transmission of HIV is eliminated. So this is the vision of Positive East. And in order to achieve that vision, there are services in place that um, aim to achieve that. One of them is information and advice to clients of Positive East. This information includes um, housing, uh, welfare benefits, immigration, and sometimes you know, support with money and finance. Uh, we've got the peer support service, which is um, peer-led, and it, is, it also supports uh, people living with HIV who are um, clients of Positive East. We've got the counseling services, uh, helps people with mind, mindful or meditating, uh, bringing back, joining body and soul together. We've got the therapeutic services. These are massage, shiatsu, acu acupuncture, uh, uh, and other services that help people to, to have their lives rejuvenated. We've got the health and well being focusing on uh, physical fitness, um, their, their nutrition and things like that. They're all focused at elevating the life and uh, lifestyle of people living with HIV. And then we have the prevention and testing uh, service, uh, which is, um, goes out, does community engagement, uh, disseminates pre HIV prevention um, messages, workshops, and also does HIV testing in different places of East London. And this is the team actually organizing this uh, workshop. Um, in the team, uh, today we have um, Gloria, uh, one of the uh, coordinators of prevention and testing. We have Beatrice, uh, another coordinator for prevention and testing. We've got a number of coordinators, but working in different boroughs of London. And myself, Badru, uh, also prevention and testing coordinator for Redbridge, working in Dagenham. And we have got a guest speaker, Reverend Jit Macaulay. And um, he's going to talk about um, HIV prevention services available for uh, black people who are men who have sex with men. Today, sexual health um, 
we look at it as a complete social and physical and mental well-being of an individual or communities. And it is not only the absence of disease or infection, but it looks widely at um, prevention of unintended pregnancies, that is about reproductive health, and it looks about prevention of other STIs, not only HIV, and looks at quality of life and sex life, sex and relationships without violence or abuse. Sex Sex is also for enjoyment, and it has got to be enjoyed in a very conducive atmosphere and place. Um, what we see these days, even in the past, in terms of conflict, in terms of war, in terms of calamities, be it tsunami, uh, be it uh, earthquakes, uh, other pandemics, this condition of conducive sexual health is, is disturbed. Is dearranged, and many things do happen. That's when you find a lot of rape cases, you find violence, domestic violence, you find infectious diseases, uh, you know, going high, and, and you find that um, the, the services that people are supposed to access cannot be accessed because the, the, the energy and the services and resources are focused somewhere else. And this is exactly what we are facing during this time of COVID-19. COVID-19 is a new pandemic caused by coronavirus. Everybody knows that. But how do we, how do, how do we react to it? How do we um, you know, act in case of this COVID-19 that we didn't know before, we know, that we know little about? Prevention of COVID-19 includes things like social distancing, isolation, quarantine, mask wearing, shielding. All these things are not really conducive for good sexual health and also are not conducive for good sex and relationships. So we, we say that it affects social, physical, and mental well-being, exactly what sexual health is all about in the first place. Now, some of the impact of COVID-19 on sexual health is confusion. There's a lot of confusion. Um, there's a lot of fear because there are so many myths and there's a lot of information around there, the fake ones and the true. Uh, there are a lot of um, myths, um, you know, as you've heard in the past, you know, COVID is not a disease. COVID is not uh, attacking black people. COVID is this, COVID that. And, uh, the measures in place create loneliness. People are isolated. Isolated people, uh, people who are in quarantine, people who are social distancing, they have, um, they're developing stress. You know, there's poverty. People are no longer, some major people are not working who are, those who are, um, who don't qualify for the, for the scheme. Uh, those who are self-employed, uh, there's domestic violence as usual. There is bereavement, people are dying, and people are unable really to, 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 to stay, to bid farewell to their loved ones because of uh, social distancing. There's a problem with access to services, access to, um, to, 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 to quality life, uh, and so forth. So these are the things that we are going to discuss uh, in this workshop, and please, um, uh, you can ask questions. Um, our panel of four people is very experienced. Um, well, I didn't talk about how experienced they are, but they are very, very experienced. Please pose some questions and you will get time to answer them. Now, um, not to go further, um, our next presenter is Beatrice, who is going to give us a, a thorough overview of social sexual issues caused by HIV, uh, caused by COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much. Beatrice? Okay, so uh, Beatrice maybe is not yet with us. Um, we, can, we can 
go to um, Gloria to tell us about other issues that uh, COVID-19 has um, impact on sexual health, um, such as mental health. Gloria, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Please, thank you. Yeah, uh, next slide, Bedru. Yeah, as Bedru has mentioned previously, um, some of the issues that people experience during um, this period of a pandemic, um, one of them is mental health. Um, and this is some information I've been, um, that I've got from the NHS website. So long-term loneliness is associated with increased risk of mental health issues like depression and anxiety. A lot of people are suffering from loneliness because they're not being able to continue their regular routines. They're unable to um, meet up with family and friends. Um, and a lot of people are feeling quite isolated mm -hmm. in the house. Um, as we obviously know, they're, they're relaxing rules as time goes by, but for quite a long period, um, everybody was supposed to stay in the house. The news can seem constantly neg negative. So I know I feel like every time I watch the news, there's rarely any good news. There's always something about, you know, um, uh, how the pandemic is getting worse. And, you know, it's, it's majority, it's majority, it, the majority of the news we get is quite negative. So um, a lot of people have lost work. A lot of places have, you know, been closed down. Beauty salons are still not up and running. Um, so a lot of people are out of work, um, which obviously has a knock-on effect um, to their to their financial um, to their finances. Um, being locked down can make people feel trapped. I know I, when I'm sitting in the house um, for a long period of time, I feel like the walls are caving in. Um, so it's, it, it can be hard for people, especially when you're used to being out and about. Um, regularly. Um, the way people grieve has changed, especially in vain communities. I know um, in, in, in our cultures when you grieve it's common to you know console with other relatives and friends, spend time together, but we're unable to do that at the minute and you know with the numbers with, with, with quite a high rate of, um, of vain people um, passing away due to COVID-19, you know it makes it even harder for people to process the situation. So that's why it has a knock-on um, effect on mental health. Next slide, please, Bedri. So we at Positive East carried out um, a, a small survey amongst our, um, our service users. And we found that over half of them had said that they feel more isolated during COVID-19. Um, nearly six out of 10 people feel like COVID-19 has affected their health and well-being. This may be um, this may not be, they may not have COVID-19 themselves, but um, because of everything that's going on around us, they're still not, you know, they're not feeling as healthy and as happy as they were previously. Um, just after, just under half have said COVID-19 has put a strain on their finances. So as I mentioned previously, some people are losing work. Um, I know a lot of people have zero hour contracts. So if you don't work, you don't get paid, um, which obviously makes it difficult for people to plan things and to move forward. Um, with finances if they don't know what is coming in and when. Um, can we have the next slide, please, Petri? So when people are feeling um, down or having experiences um, of sort of anxiety and depression, the NHS, has, the NHS has advised that they should stay connected with friends where possible. Um, so if they can talk to people via video calls, social media, um, telephone calls, just to make sure that you still have that you know that contact with people and you're just you know you're not keeping yourself totally isolated um talk to people about how you're feeling um if you're feeling sad try and tell someone i know sometimes it may not be the easiest thing to open up like that. um i have listed some telephone lines at the end of this um with a bit of, of information of where people can contact if they are um feeling really down and they don't feel like they can talk to people around them um, take care of your body, exercise and eat healthily. Um, I know I've been eating a lot of junk <laughs> during lockdown. It's easy to get into a rut where, you know, you're in the house and you're eating rubbish and you're snacking. That won't do your mental health any good. Um, keep up with fresh fruit and vegetables. Get out for a walk where you can um, if you're not isolating and if you're not you know, presenting symptoms. Then get out and get some. I mean, the weather's been lovely over the last few days. Um, and I feel loads better with the sunshine um, at the minute. Um, 
don't stay glued to the news. I know it's really difficult and you want to keep in the loop with what's going on, but sometimes it does more harm than good. Sometimes it's beneficial just to maybe check in once a day. You know, sometimes you may get in a place where you're checking every few hours what's changed. I know when they were doing the, um, the death tolls every, you know, every day, I used to check quite incessantly and I found that that used to make me quite sad. So I stopped. So sort of maybe set one time a week or one time a day where you check the news. Um, yeah. And then also take up a new hobby at home. Focus on doing things that you, you enjoy. I've started gardening. Um, I found it helps getting outside. So you can sort of kill two birds with one stone. You get some exercise, you, you, you know, you learn a new skill. Um, and I find that I'm enjoying it quite a bit as well. Take time to relax, practice mindfulness and sleep well. I know um, Jide had meant, Reverend Jide earlier had mentioned that he's trying to keep up his routine. Um, he sleeps at the same time, he wakes up early. So that routine as well, and um, it, it, it helps it helps sleeping for, for enough hours during the night as well. Those are the kind of things that, um, that help keep the mental health um, good. Next slide, please. So sex workers. Sex workers have seen um, a, a dramatic decrease in clients. Um, obviously, because of the lockdown, they can't go out, they can't um, meet people, um, they can't invite people into their homes. And working in the sex industry, they don't have sick pay or a regular salary. So they, they base their wages on money that, you know, meeting clients and meeting people. Um, you know, some people are now claiming benefits. So they've um, gone into universal credit and they're trying to fill the gap that way, in, you know, while they still can't work. Um, I know other people are using other ways um, to carry on sex work, but without the physical contact. So I know some people are using phone sex. So I know sex lines are making a comeback um, because people can't go out, so you know you can call up and speak to somebody, and that person gets money in exchange for how long they keep you on the phone for. Um, picture messaging: um, people are sending pictures or risky pictures or um, explicit pictures in return for um, in return for money. Um, but with that, we're also making sure that people know that um, if you don't, you know, with a picture, somebody can share that, and you know, you may not want them to share that. So, you know, you could keep out your face or keep out any. Um, tattoos um, so people can't really identify that it's you. Um, cam and video sex, so you know with things like WhatsApp um, and Zoom and you know there's all kinds of video platforms that people can um, have video sex that way. Um, there are some organisations that are currently um, offering financial support for sex workers. I know Swarm is one of them um, and they're trying to support people, support sex workers during this period. Next slide please. Buddy. So the impact on reproductive health. A lot of clinics at the minute um, have closed for face-to-face -face appointments um, unless there's an emergency. And then, whereas in that case, they have an initial phone con um, a phone consultation before they decide whether that person needs to come in or not. Um, emergency contraception is still available. So if somebody needs prep, if somebody needs prep if somebody needs the morning after pill, they can still access those. It may be different the way they access them, but those are still available. Um, for example, if somebody's also looking for the coil, um, they may not be able to get the coil straight away, but they may be offered an alternative method of contraception in the meantime. So they may be, they may, um, be on the pill until they're able to get the coil put in. Um, Abortions, people can still also get abortions. I know of late, since we've been in lockdown, they've been trialing, um, allowing people to have abortions at home if they're under 10 weeks. Um, so you'd have an initial consultation on the phone with a doctor um, and then they'd make that decision and you'd get a prescription and you'd carry out the process um, at home. If uh, a woman, a, a, somebody's over 10 weeks, um, then they'd have to, um, Still speak, they'll still have the initial conversation over the phone, but they'd probably have to go into hospital um, and have a medical abortion. Can I have the next slide? slide please? So yeah, so these are some links to some information um, for people if they need any extra support. Um, I will send these all out um, in an email. Um, I'm not sure if I have everyone's email actually, but I will make the slides available. Um, and if people can, I'm not sure if you can drop your email, if people can drop their emails in the chat, actually if they'd like the slides and I can send these out when um when we finish. Um so I think I think Beatrice is back in Beatrice.
Beatrice. I think she's having a few technical issues. Um, Badger, I think you may need to um, run over Beatrice's slides if you could. I was muted. Am I okay now to go? Yeah, uh, in the uh, absence of Beatrice, um, uh, these are the social issues um, that COVID-19 has had an impact on social sex sexual health. Um, one of them is um, social isolation, uh, domestic violence, sexual abuse, sex and relationships, access to prevention services, um, uh, just like PEP, post-exposure prophylaxis, pre-exposure prophylaxis, condoms, and HIV testing. So the lockdown definitely is equal to isolation. And it is a threat to the, um, to the community and uh, has made HIV testing, treatment, care, and support impossible to access. Um, basic needs um, for people uh, in a lockdown is very complicated. Um, people are having depression, what um, Gloria has just talked about, and there's an increase uh, in stigma um, for sexual health. People don't, can't just go to the GP and look for sexual health services just because um, they need to go to their sexual health clinic where they are known, where they, they are used to uh, get yeah. services. Yeah. Hello? So, there's a lockdown, uh, there's a lot of violence in people's homes. Um, this is due to restrictions and frustrations of people not going out. They are always in each other's face. You know, they're getting anxious. Um, you know, just a small thing like uh, somebody delaying in a, in a toilet can, 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 <laughs> can result into a, a big fight. Um, such things, uh, we've, got, we've seen some certain things um, on, on, on television and also in social media where actually domestic violence is, is, is being a problem nowadays in the days, in the days of lockdown. Um, there are also other existing, already existing um, uh, domestic violence uh, incidents which have been escalated. Um, there's sexual abuse. Um, we understand that um, in some homes, uh, siblings, grown-ups, I mean teenagers, because they are no longer going out, they are no longer doing their thing outside the parents. The only people of opposite sex or people that they admire are in the house, you find that siblings are having secretly sex in the house. Uh, and when parents don't know, everybody is in their own room, uh, isolating. Um, this uh, links to you know, sexual abuse and domestic abuse as well. I'm sure Beatrice would have explained this one better, but um, I'll try my best. <clears throat> um, sex and relationships, um, most of the essential services that uh, uh, address this issue are not accessible. Um, there is a, a lot of education and a lot of clear messages that need to go out. Um, prevention services like um, STI clinics are closed down, but thanks God these days they are opening slowly as the lockdown is easing. But uh, in the past, somebody who had a, uh, you know, suspected sexually transmitted infection couldn't just walk in 
into the clinic and ask for support. Um, and also uh, most of the services has been online where you are assessed to see whether you are really at risk or not before anything is done. So there has been limitations uh, in get accessing those services. HIV testing and STI screening, um, which is normally known point of care testing had this to exist. Um, and I'm sure because COVID I think is going to be with us for quite a long time, um, things have changed for, for, for forever. Um, active screening for signs or symptoms of possible COVID-19, they are almost the same like HIV primary infection. That is weakness, cough, uh, bad breathing. You know, somebody who has acquired HIV in you know, primary infection, they suffer the same symptoms as COVID. So sometimes it is very difficult to know which is which. There's been a problem also to access pre-exposure prophylaxis, post-exposure prophylaxis. We know that um, usually the first call for post-exposure prophylaxis is accident and emergency. And you can imagine what is happening there in the time of COVID-19. Um, that service can only address other, uh, can only address people who have suspected COVID-19 rather than people who have suspected uh, HIV infection. Um, U is equal to U, um, that is if somebody is managing their HIV very well with medication, they are unable to transmit. The time when uh, services that reinforce adherence to medication are difficult to access. Many of people living with HIV may find it quite difficult to adhere to their treatment because adherence to treatment is not just information, but it is the support around that person taking uh, medication, addressing if there are side effects, addressing uh, issues of nutrition, um, addressing issues that are barriers to, um, to taking medication to treatment. And if those services are not there, um, and also um, monitoring um, resistance or adherence is not uh, really accessible, then there might be a problem with U is equal to U, undetectable is equal to untransmitted. So, um, Health and well being check, um, as we said earlier, um, that program of uh, uh, therapies, addressing therapies, nutrition, uh, shiatsu, like massage, all support the well being of a person living with HIV are not accessible these days. And these are the issues that we face. Now, because these services are hard to access, it is not the end of the world. There are support, support services that are replacing them. Most of the support services, support group services are online and uh, they are advertised on a daily basis. Um, there's dancing groups online as well, um, advertised especially from uh, Positive East, uh, once a week, there are services for women dancing groups and services for men dancing groups, and services for mixed dancing groups. These are also morale boosting uh, services. One-to-one -one services online as well, it is available. Um, we have um, love chat, we call it love chat or live chat, where people can always come in to chat with someone about their sexual health. We've got um, the uh, reception, app working, actively working, and we've got other services in, in between. Um, what else? Online prep, um, it is also accessible. Um, we've got um, a website, sexualhealth.uk, and also Dean Street, one can just call in we will show you the um, telephone numbers, the contacts. One can just call in 
and ask about PrEP. Um, there are food banks open, and once you call Positive East, they can always refer you to a good food bank near your place. And some of these food banks, uh, food can be uh, delivered to the door. Online HIV testing services um, are just opening now. Um, we, are now, we now have services that target the homeless uh, in the hotels where they are, uh, together with the, um, the NHS, we do test. I think Badru's frozen. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a feeling Badru has frozen. All right. Jude, Reverend Jude, can we move to you then? Um, yeah, absolutely. And this is the joy of the internet. So you can never be, uh, you, you can never tell what's going to happen. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm just going to bring my slide up. Um, so I can share. Right, can people see my slide? I think that's a good place to start, good. Right, hello everyone, I'm Judy McCauley. Um, you know, Badru and the team at Positive East have invited me to, um, you know, share briefly what we're doing at House of Rainbow. Um, of course, he, he wants me to focus on staying healthy during the lockdown and the focus on uh, sexual health for black, Asian, minority, ethnic communities. But I'm going to focus on the black MSM community that we actually support uh, a, with other organizations. So um, a little bit about what I'm going to do in the time that I've got. Um, I will certainly introduce myself a little bit more. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about House of Rainbow, and I will explain to you a poll that we did recently uh, during the lockdown support. Um, I will also uh, talk briefly about the online peer support that we have ongoing, and the tools on online support for men who have sex with men living with HIV. Okay, and then of course, if people have questions and answers, questions are questions, they can ask me and I'll do my best to respond. So this is me in one take. Um, I don't think I need to say any more. Um, you know, I have been, uh, I'm an expert for the past 25 years, in fact, more than 25 years, uh, because this postcard is a little older. Um, my organization started 13 years ago uh, in Nigeria, and we continue our services here uh, in the UK in 2010. So, um, and um, of course, I have a law background, but I am now, um, uh, a minister in the Church of England and also a volunteer chaplain at Mad May Hospital. Some of you might know Mad May Hospital is a leading HIV care hospital. So um, that's a little bit about me and um, um, about my organization. Uh, we're actually a faith-based organization that focuses our support on the Black, um, uh, African and Black Caribbean communities in the UK. Um, we still remain a faith-based organization um, welcoming to the LGBT community. Uh, we have a website that you can check out at any time. So um, this is some of the things that we've been doing during lockdown. So um, just very briefly, every Sunday we have what is called Pride and Glory Encounter at about 12 noon. And of course, we have been very much involved with our voice during Black Lives Matter as of recently, as you can see on that poster in the middle, uh, black lesbian, black gay, black bisexual, black transgender, black intersex, and black queer lives matter. Definitely within the, uh, the black community. Um, of course, um, we're also doing a lot to ensure that we also have a presence during the digital pride uh, this year. So this is a survey uh, I'm talking about. Um, we actually did it on our own platform. 
Um, so we did ask people yes or no. Uh, since the global pandemic, has your well-being been affected? Um, you might want to think about it for yourself, you know, um, the question, but I will just give you the responses that came with the survey um, when once it was done. So, um, so this is the response. I mean, we asked queer men of color living with HIV since the global pandemic, has your well-being been affected? 62% said yes, 58% said no. So a total of 29 respondents, this indicates that our projects such as the lockdown support and online seminar for queer men of color is effective. I will explain that uh, a little later. Um, 29 respondents might feel like a small number, but it's very significant for the work that we do. So in that case, staying healthy, um, I think some of the things that I'm going to say have been mentioned by my colleagues, so I, I don't think I will go into too much detail. But the online peer support that we have, um, we, it focuses on mental health and emotional well-being, uh, which often means that we do referrals for counseling and therapy, pastoral care and support. Um, I, I was going to add a quick note before I was called that in, in Leitingstone, we also are able to make a referral for a food bank, which actually does not require any kind of uh, letters or nomination. You can just uh, go along and collect um, It happens every Thursday at 2 p.m. So you can just go along and get a parcel of food, uh, no questions asked, um, it's in Leitingston. If anybody, I will share the information probably in the chat box in a moment. Now, positively fitting uh, fitness during COVID, uh, you've heard exercise is very important. Even something as simple as going out for a walk is very important during this time. Communication with friends and relatives is also very important. Keep in touch with your friends and also time off from online activities. It is important that you just shut down all your systems. Otherwise, we're going to be getting square eyes. And, and I think the opticians will be very busy post COVID-19. Anyway, um, about COVID and HIV, um, of course, you know, um, the idea of sex being completely out of the question for many, uh, you know, it's a tricky question for sexual health organizations, including my organization. Um, but of course, I mean, we can't tell people not to have sex. So we just say to people, please practice safer sex. Um, you know, I was in a meeting yesterday when a doctor was saying to us that, you know, um, the risk of COVID-19 is definitely in the saliva um, and, and also in unprotected sexual intercourse. So those are the things that we care about even with our HIV services, service provision. Um, at my organization, House of Rainbow, we're quite prepared to do a postal delivery of condoms and lubricants for those who need it. Um, the other thing we also say is to, to ensure that your information is sound. We have seen many informations that are completely untrue. So please look out for reliable sources for the information that you receive and share. So the second question that we ask in our survey is, has isolation affected your normal routine and your mental health? So the outcome is uh, we have asked, we asked black gay men living with HIV has isolation affected your normal routine and mental health during the COVID-19? During COVID 24 people took part. So 72% said yes, 28% said no. Okay. So the third question that we asked is, is the pandemic and isolation having an impact on your ability to adhere to your HIV treatment and stay in contact with your medical support? Um, so the, the answer, 18 people actually responded to this one. So 49% said yes, 51% said no. And, and that cons we have a project that was uh, implemented around about the same time. Um, so it's called accountability partner. So we ask people to consider the accountability partner. And I will explain that in a minute. So uh, in terms of tools for online, for MSM Living with HIV, we have uh, a WhatsApp group called Proudly Positive Peers. Um, it has close to about 100 people within that group that support each other. These are strictly Black African uh, or Black gay men or bisexual men living with HIV, strictly Black 
men who have sex with men live with HIV. So if you do not fit into that category, i.e. you're not black and you're not HIV positive, uh, you cannot be part of that group. It's very strict. And, and of course, we hold that, you know, for security, privacy, and confidentiality because um, many gay men haven't come out as gay and many are living with HIV. They have not shared their status with their family or relatives. So we have to be very strict um, with that support group. So um, what does the support group do? Communication, peer support, breaking the myth. So when COVID-19 happened, we had to readdress so many of the questions that people had. Now, Accountability Partners um, is a, a project, again, for Black gay men, so that we will link two people together um, who are Black and gay, HIV positive, in order for them to have conversations with each other and, of course, remind each other of their medication. You know, I'm a Black gay man. I'm living with HIV myself. So I have a partner who helps me out during the account for Accountability Partner. Believe it or not, my partner is in Uganda, and he will call me at eight o'clock or send me a text message to say, have you taken your medication? And it has worked very well uh, for the past six months. So um, there are other programs at House of Rainbow that I will explain to you. So this is the poster for the accountability partner. As you can see, uh, we ask a question, are you black, gay, and HIV positive? Do you need regular support and care? Uh, do you feel isolated or need a friend? And these are the reasons that we're basing this on. So we try to do the match so that people actually are able to support one another. The poster in the middle is when we had an online peer support. Um, this attended, almost about 30 people attended it, so it was really good. Now the lockdown support is ongoing and is continuous, uh, you know, uh, at the moment as well. Um, of course, the peer support also produced this booklet. Um, it's a collection of poetry and prose um, you know, to support people living with HIV. So Positively on Dictative is an anthology of Black African men who are sex with men living with HIV. And um, um, of course, we're giving copies away, PDF copies, of course. If anybody likes a copy, please contact us at that email address on the screen. And I believe this will be my last slide. Yeah. So if you want to contact us, there are many ways. We are active and alive and present on social media. And um, so you can contact us as well. The landline telephone is in the office. I'm sorry, you're going to get an answer machine for that, but you can contact our mobile number and several other ways that you can contact us. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Judy McCauley. Um, over to you. Um, does anyone have any questions? I think most people are on mute, but you can unmute if you've got any questions. Hi, uh, Fred Semgera, uh, Croydon Council Public Health. Um, I don't know whether this is for a positive uh, East or for the Reverend. Do you think there's been any uh, anything good as far as HIV is concerned, anything good that's come out of the uh, lockdown? Um, I can I can go. I, I think that you know um, some of the information that we're hearing is that um, there has been a lot less sex happening. So as you know, the more sex we have in our world, the more we are encountering uh, different crises. You know, whether the the need for prep or the need for uh, immediate attention with STIs and things like that. But there is a lot less sex going on, unless I'm completely naive. But I think that we're also quite mindful that people are finding different ways, you know, to meet up and link up. So those are the things we probably will need to look out for. Um, I think from organization, what has been an increase is support around mental health, pastoral care. Um, the level of isolation is very high within the LGBT community altogether. And um, we have seen a lot of increase in that area. So we've also seen an increase in support for uh, LGBT migrants, you know, people seeking asylum, who obviously COVID-19 has impacted them much more terribly because they do not have access to public funds. And of course, their well-being and their mental health is, is certainly in crisis. So um, in terms of anything good, 
to be quite honest, there is less of that, but there is a lot more that we can do to continue to support people. Um, the, the idea that um, COVID-19 disproportionately affects black communities and Asians and minority ethnic communities um, is probably a disaster waiting to happen. I wasn't surprised myself at all because every area of our life is affected. We are mostly uh, on the front line in the supermarkets doing menial jobs. So we are affected. So um, I think we'll be very optimistic to be able to calculate what the good is. Um, so thanks Fred for the question. Fred, can I, yeah. sorry, can I, I can add something onto that as well. I mean, definitely from a support perspective, it's new ways how to support people. I mean, as we mentioned previously at Positive East, we've got a really comprehensive um, online um, staying at home program. So people are engaging with us more online, but it's fantastic because I think it was two weeks ago, um, I had an Instagram conversation with an organization based in, um, in the Midlands, in Manchester. So, I mean, pre-lockdown, we wouldn't have been able to have those conversations about, you know, we would have, but it, it would have been a bit more hectic about logistics and things like that. But the way we've been using platforms like um, Zoom, like Teams, Instagram, Facebook Live, the conversations we've been having here and internationally, I think it's been great, the conversations that we've been, you know, that we've had going at the minute. So thanks for that question, Fred. Um, Thank it, you. Does anyone else have any questions? Uh, if no one else has got a question, um, Reverend, I think your first slide with the uh, uh, percentages um, yeah. got my maths uh, confused a bit. Okay, um, which one was it? Let me just go. The, the very first ones, uh, I think you had um, 72 percent, no, no, before the 72 percent, I had something which was going over 100 <laughs> percent. Let me, let me check for you. Okay. Is it this one? Yeah, that one, yeah. Could you I please explain the 62 so yeah, that, that and 58? Should have, that should have been 48% or 38%. Ah, okay. That was my typing error. I do apologize. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank I you. thought my, my, my mathematics <laughs> was getting rusty. Okay, thank you. You can see, we need support. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, if no one's got any more questions, um, I think we can give it, you know, put it down there. Thank you so much, Reverend Jude, for joining us today. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Um, I, as I mentioned earlier, you can also leave your email in the chat box and I can send out our slides. Um, and it's got some information at the end of the presentation about um, places people can contact and how to get in, in touch with us. But did you have anything to add? Well, um, also, um, we say we'll send the contacts, um, information updates, and we, we are sure that the situation of COVID-19 is changing, changing fast. Um, services will change accordingly. We have to manage it properly, uh, but we assume that uh, services will never be the same. As Gloria said, there are now new ways of reaching out to people, new ways of community engagement, new ways of talking and providing services. So, um, yeah, uh, we will also invite you for our next workshop because they are going to be recurring. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much for all of you who have um, Reverend Jide, thank you very much for coming. Uh, You're welcome. Or, or, I mean, Beatrice, and, uh, and the question from Mr. Fred Semgel. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Thank you for joining in. And have a nice afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.